promoted their beliefs, which is, of course, anti-Christian, anti-God. And they admit it, folks. Listen to this. This is uh, one quote is from Orestes Brownson. He said this. He says, our great object was to get rid of Christianity and to convert our churches into halls of science. The plan was not to make open attacks on religion, but to establish a system of state schools from which all religion was to be excluded and to which all parents were to be compelled by law to send their children. For this purpose, a secret society was formed, and the whole country was to be organized. They admit it, okay? Uh, uh, John Dewey, he's the father of our progressive education, and he's also the co-author of the First Humanist Manifesto, and he on, was an honorary uh, National Education Association president. Here's what he said, hey, there is no God and there is no soul. Uh, hence, there is no need for the props of traditional religion. With dogma and creed excluded, then immutable truth, absolute truth, is dead and buried. There is no room for fixed natural law or moral absolutes. That's one of the pillars of our current educational system, okay? Uh, Charles Potter, he wrote this. He said, education, the public school system, is thus a most powerful ally of humanism. And every American school is a school of humanism. Listen to their dripping mockery. He says, what can a theistic Sunday schools meeting for an hour once a week, teaching only a fraction of the children, do to stem the tide of a five-day program of humanistic teaching? They know, folks, they got the major influence. They got the minds of the kids. And it's getting worse with each generation. Uh, another one, Paul Blanchard, uh, he says this. He says, I think that the most important factor moving us towards a secular society has been the educational factor. Our schools may not teach Johnny to read properly, but the fact that Johnny's in school until he's 16 tends to lead towards the elimination of religious superstition, i.e. a belief in God and Christianity. Uh, uh, G. Uh, Richard Bozarth, here's what he said. He said, we must ask. To tell me, folks, this is not the agenda. It's a spiritual war we're in, folks. It's not a political thing. He says, we must ask how we can kill the God of Christianity. Well, that's a quote from uh, G. Richard Bozarth. And uh, he said this, he says, we must ask how we can kill the God of Christianity. That's their goal, folks. He says, we need only to ensure that our schools teach only secular knowledge. If we could achieve this, God would indeed be shortly due for a funeral service. John uh, Dunphy, he said this, another humanist, he says, I am convinced that the battle for mankind's future must be waged and won where? In the public school classroom by teachers who correctly perceive their role as proselytizers of a new faith a religion of humanity. These teachers must embody the same selfless dedication as the most rabid fundamentalist preachers, for they will be ministers of another sort, utilizing a classroom instead of a pulpit to convey humanist values in whatever subject they teach, regardless of the educational level, preschool, daycare, or even a large state university. The classroom, he says, must and will become an arena of conflict between the old and the new, the rotting corpse of Christianity, and the new faith of humanism. And uh, another guy says this, this is their ultimate goal, folks. They actually believe that uh, our children do not belong to us, but belong to them. And we have the audacity to think that we're going to train them. Uh, uh, uh. They have an agenda. They are preparing our kids for the new world order. Don't believe me? Listen to this guy's quote. He says, every child in America entering school at the age of five, listen to this, is mentally ill. What? Why would, what, what, what do you mean? Well, listen to this. He says, here's why he's mentally ill. Because, quote, he comes to school with certain allegiances towards our founding fathers, toward our elected officials, toward his parents, towards the belief in a supernatural being, toward the sovereignty of this nation as a separate entity. It is up to you, teachers, to make all these sick children well by creating the international children of the future. Hey, folks, whatever happened to rewriting the arithmetic? Uh-uh. School's been hijacked, folks, by these humanists. Okay, and they are teaching a different agenda. It's humanism, that man is the center of all things. But we, we teach kids from we high that they came from apes instead of Adam in the image of God, created for a special purpose. Uh, so we teach them they came from apes, then we're shocked when they act like apes. And then when we see these atrocities and this, this rise of wickedness that the Bible said was going to take place in the last days, we get all, you know, people shake a fist at God, why, God, why? Okay, and I love this. We actually share the video of this, and the guy demonstrates it very well. And, and he, he, you know, basically they cry, why, God, why is all this evil in the school and the shootings and the killings and why? And, and, and they go, it goes like this. It says, dear God, why didn't you save the children at Moses Lake, Washington, or Bethel, Alaska, or, or Pearl, Mississippi, or West Paducah, Kentucky?
Kentucky or Stamp, Arkansas, or Jonesboro, Arkansas, or Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, or Fayetteville, Tennessee, or Springfield, Oregon, Richmond, Virginia, Littleton, Colorado, Tabor, Alberta, Canada, Conyers, Georgia, Denning, New Mexico, Fort Gibson, Oklahoma, Santee, California, El Cajon, California, and Blacksburg, Virginia. Sincerely, uh, Concerned Student. Reply, Dear Concerned Student, God speaking, I am not allowed in schools. Sincerely, God. And then he goes on to say, he says, well, how did this get started? He said, I think it started when Madeline Murray O'Hare complained that she didn't want any prayer in our schools. And we said, okay. And then someone said, well, you better not read the Bible in school. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, and love your neighbors yourself. And we said, okay. And then Dr. Spock came along, and, 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 and he said, we shouldn't spank our children when they misbehave because their personalities would be warped and we might damage their self-esteem. And we said, well, an expert should know what, what, what uh, he's talking about, and so we don't spank him anymore. And then someone said, teachers and principals better not discipline our children when they misbehave. And the school administrator says, mm-hmm. No faculty member in this school better touch a student when they misbehave because we don't want any bad publicity and we sure don't want to be sued. And we accepted their reasoning. And then someone said, hey, uh, let's let our daughters have abortions if they want. And and they won't even have to tell their parents. And we said, that's a grand idea. And then some white school board member said, hey, since boys will be boys and they're going to do it anyway, let's give our sons all the condoms they want so they can have all the fun they desire. We want, they want to tell their parents that they got them at school. And we said, hey, that's another great idea. And then some of our top elected officials said, it doesn't matter what we do in private as long as we do our jobs. And we said, it doesn't matter what anybody, including the president, does in private as long as we have jobs and the economy is good. And someone else took uh, that appreciation a step further and, and publish pictures of new children and, and then steps further by making them available on the Internet. And we said, hey, everyone's entitled to free speech. And then the entertainment industry said, hey, let's make TV shows and movies that promote profanity and violence and illicit sex. And let's record music that encourages rape and drugs and murder and suicide and satanic themes. And we said, it's just entertainment. And it has no adverse effect. And nobody takes it seriously anyway. anyway so, so go right ahead. And now we are asking ourselves, why are our children having no conscience? Why they don't know right from wrong, and why it doesn't bother them to kill strangers, classmates, or even themselves? Undoubtedly, if we thought about it long and hard enough, we could figure it out. Surely it has a great deal with, we reap what we sow. Because we've allowed these humanist folks to come in here with their uh, belief system being promoted in our school system, in our courtrooms, in our government, and the media, that there is no such thing as God, that the Bible's a bunch of baloney. We need to take all restraints off on behavior. Uh, we need to encourage euthanasia and abortion and suicide. Let people do whatever they want. That's why. Because we are, God isn't doing this, folks. We're doing it to ourselves. It ain't him, it's us. We kicked him out of our schools. We kicked him out of our courtrooms. We kicked him out of our government. And we've allowed a wicked teaching into our society uh, called humanism with this atheistic mindset, and it's giving birth to all this baloney. And if there's any hope, folks, we, I'm telling you, if there's any hope for our nation, we have got to get back, so to speak, to a spiritual revival. We've got to, if you will, kick God back into our school system, back into our courtrooms, and back into our uh, 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 government, and we've got to seek his blessings again like the president of Uganda did. That's the only way out of this mess, and until we get that, we are wasting our time, okay? And again, they've come along, and they've taught this, and one of the most secular anti-institutions that you could ever send your kids to is called public education, okay? It is going to radically affect your kids, and they're going to have your kids for at least 40 hours a week, and the average parent spends less than a half hour a day with their children. They've got your kid for at least eight, and that's just a secular system. Uh, attack on to that all the media influence. Attack all on that the, the secular influence and their, their friends, their peer influences that's also ingesting this stuff. Folks, they've got the mind of our children. And you think, well, it's not really that bad on Are you kidding me? Let me give you some statistics from the U.S. Census Bureau. Ever since evolution was introduced into our school system, and you tell me if it's had positive results on the behavior of our children and our society. Okay? Back in the 1950s, the average textbook only had two to 3,000 words about evolution. 
But in 1963, it jumped up to 33,000 words. And it also just so happened that in 1963, that's also when prayer and Bible reading was taken out of the American school system. All right? So let's take a look and see what this effect had on the country. Since 1963, sexually transmitted diseases among teenagers and young adults have increased nearly 400%. Instances of premarital sex among teenagers have skyrocketed. Unwed pregnancies among young girls is up 553%. Unmarried couples living together is up 725%. Divorce rates are up uh, 111%. Single-parent households are quickly becoming the norm. The SAT scores have absolutely plummeted. We actually share video clips of former school administrations working for the National Education Association admit that they are deliberately dumbing down the population of America. Uh, they also, another statistic, alcohol and drug consumption obviously has gone ballistic. And listen to this. Ever since 1963, since evolution, Rip got out of the schools. Yeah, that's great, huh? Ever since then, 1963, violent crimes have gone up 995%. And again, folks, hey, is it really a surprise? You, you tell kids they came from an ape, you're, you're, you're surprised when they act like apes. You tell kids that there is no meaning to life, and, and you're shocked when they have no respect for life. It makes sense. What you believe determines how you behave. And these guys know this, folks. The humanists. That's why they're attacking Christianity. That's why they've slowly, methodically, over the last several decades, been slowly but surely removing God out of the equation. I wanted to share, Dr. Monteith, if I could, a, uh, a warning that Paul Harvey gave to our country nearly 50 years ago. And this was 50 years ago, folks. And it's like, man, too bad we didn't listen to him back then. But, but it, it, it's a little story, and it's just called, If I Were the Devil, <clears throat> and listen to what he said. He said, if I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, he said, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I would have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. He said, I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of the serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide uh, that what is bad is good and what is good is square. And, and the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors on how to make lured literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flame. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects but neglect to discipline emotion. Just let those run wild until before you knew it, you'd have to have, he said this 50 years ago, he said you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse and then from the schoolhouse and then from the House of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I would take from those who have and I would give to those who wanted until I killed the incentive of the ambitious. And uh, what will you bet I could get the whole, whole states to promote gambling as a way to get rich? I would caution against extremes and hard work and, and patriotism and moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned that swinging is much more fun, and that what you see on TV is the way it's to be, and thus I could undress you in public and lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. And he says, in other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. I wonder how many more centuries we have to see this playing out in front of our eyes before we say something crazy going on here. Is there an idea more radical in the history of the human race than turning your children over to total strangers who you know nothing about and having those strangers work on your child's mind out of your sight for a period of 12 years. 
could there be a more radical idea than that?